Good morning and welcome to this week's webinar. My name is Christiana Holmes and I'm with the Engineering CAD Systems Office. And this morning we're going to be discussing laying out utilities in SS4. And if you have any questions during the webinar, please type them in the question portion of the webinar dialogue and um, either I or my coworkers will get them answered. The topics we're going to cover in this webinar are the utilities that have been retired in SS4 and how to determine what those levels are and how to update them. Um, then we're going to lay out the utilities using civil features and view those and label them in the cross sections. Then, then I'm going to go over what exactly um, SUE or SUDA is and what is included in the different licensing. And then we'll lay out utilities using SUE and view those in the cross sections. And um, then I'm going to cover class detection and flex tables. And if we have time, we'll give a little drainage preview. There have been several utilities that have been retired, uh, or utility levels that have been retired or changed in SS4. All of the standard existing utility levels and line styles have been removed, so you will now have to set a quality level on each existing underground utility. Some other changes include all of the power levels have been changed to, um, say, electric, so what was power pole will now be electric pole. The fiber optic levels um, have been split into three different categories, fiber optic cable, fiber optic electric, and fiber optic telephone. And there were a few other miscellaneous level changes that were made as well. There is a tool for locating and updating these levels and, and any other out-of-date levels. Um, so let's go into MicroStation and I'll demonstrate how this tool works. So I have a utility file that has some out-of-date levels in it and um, once your file opens, you just want to go to Actions, Quality Control, and at the bottom there's this QC Legacy tool. And if you click on that tool, um, it's going to scan your file and look for elements that are on old legacy levels. Uh, so the dialog will pop up and it will tell you how many elements you have on an old level and then what rule file it used to determine that. And then the chart here, it will tell you what model the element's in, the element type, and then what the legacy level is. It will not show you the new level name or a level name to change it to. That's for you to decide. So if you um, just select an element, right click on it, you'll get this fixed level option. If you click on that, this dialog will pop up and that will give you um, all of the new levels to choose from. So that was uh, Telephone EP and um, is now being called Telephone Aerial EP. So I just select the level I want to change it to and click OK and then that element is fixed. And you can do multiple elements at a time so by using your um, shift and control keys so you can just select all of the telephone that you want, right click, fix level, and then choose the level that you want to change it to. Click OK. So um, lately I've got a, quite a few questions about the different quality levels and what they all mean and where those definitions or descriptions can be found. The descriptions for each quality level can be found in the PPM Chapter 5, Section 5.3, utility locates. And the quality levels are different levels of accuracy for existing utilities. Quality level D is the lowest level of accuracy and the information obtained for this quality level is um, from existing utility records. So if you just got some records or existing plans from a utility company then that would be quality level D. Quality level C is more accurate than quality level D. Um, the information obtained for quality level C is from a topo survey um, of utility features. So this may be from a previous survey or from a survey of your project. Quality level B is more accurate um, than quality level C and the information is you, um, obtained from scanning technologies. And this quality level, you may have a reasonable idea of the horizontal information but maybe a limited vertical information. And the best quality level is quality level A, but um, it's not included in our workspace at this time. 
Um, there's a question out here that says, can you sort by level in the QC Legacy box? And the answer is yes. Um, you can sort by level or you can sort by element, I think, too, um, in that Legacy box. So there are two different ways to lay out your utilities. One is using the civil features. This will not give you a utility model, but it will allow you to get your utilities on your cross sections. The other is using Sue, which will give you a full utility model um, of your utility plans. The first one I want to demonstrate is um, using the utility features. So let's get back into MicroStation and go into a different file. So in this file, I just have my existing utilities that I got from a surveyor, and I have a terrain attached to it. So the first thing you want to do um, when you're laying out your utilities is to make sure in your standard menu configuration that you have this Include Utility Features option toggled on. And first, I'm going to set the terrain as active. And then I'm going to hit F2 to um, see the 2D and 3D view. So I'm going to go to Civil Tools, General Geometry, and use this Set Feature Definition. This is why I say you need to make sure that you have that option toggled on. If you did not have that Include Utilities feature, you won't get this Utilities folder and the Set Feature Definition dialog. The first utility we're going to do is this sanitary sewer here. So I want to um, go out here and select the feature for sani existing sanitary sewer. And this is a 10 inch quality level C. And then it, it um, populates a name here and um, this is the feature name and this name will also be used in your cross-section uh, labeling. So if you if we, if you choose to use the um, the civil annotate cross-sections tool, this is the um, feature name that's going to be used. So if you want something else like 10 inch sand, you can change it here. Now on my cursor it's saying locate elements. So you can do a selection set of elements and then apply the feature or you can just locate the elements by selecting them one by one. And then when you have selected all of the elements um, that you want to apply the feature to, you just right click to reset. And then if you hover over it, you'll see that the line string has the feature sanitary sewer 10 inch pipe quality level C and then the name that you provided. And the second step to this method is to create a profile of that, that utility line. So you can do that by going to the vertical geometry tools, um, the open profile model here, or you can do it from your context menu by selecting the utility line and then um, waiting for the context menu to pop up. <clears throat> and then it's asking me to select or open a view. So I'm going to just pick view three. And this is the profile of that sanitary line. And you can see it's indicated by the blue arrows. And then we want to make this profile, uh, give it a depth of cover. So we want to use this tool under vertical geometry, profile offset transition. Um, so it's asking me to locate the element that I want to um, offset. So I'm going to choose the profile. And then it's going to ask me for start parameters. So um, I'm going to click the Alt button to start at the very beginning and then give it a depth of cover of negative three feet. And then data point to accept that. Now it's asking for the end parameters. I'm going to alt to lock to the end as well. And data point. And then I don't want to mirror the profile, so I'm going to leave that as no, at no. And then it places this profile out here um, on the correct utility level. And the next step is to um, make this profile active so that I get a 3D line string. So if I click on it and hover over, I get a um, the set as active profile. And once I click that, you'll notice that it placed a 3D line string out here in my 3D view. The utility features that you use, they set the plan view level, they set the profile view level, and the cross-section view size and level, and the 3D level. So if you had a bunch of lines like this water line co that connected together and you didn't want to um, create a profile for each one, 
you could use this horizontal geometry tool, complex by element. And then we'll go out here and select a waterline. And this is 18 inch level B. The main thing with a uh, And I'm going to set a, a maximum gap of 0 0.01. And I'm going to leave the method at manual. So the main thing you want to make sure when you're doing a complex by element is that when you locate the elements, that that purple arrow that's on the end over here is going in the right direction. So you locate all of the um, lines that you want to complex together and then data point to accept. And then if you hover over it, you can see that it's given me the feature and the complex uh, element name. Now in this one I forgot to name it a different name so if I wanted to I could always come in here to the properties and rename it here. I have a couple questions out here. Is the size of the utility line shown in the plan? So the only, where, only place that the utility um, size is shown is in the cross section so it will place the right size oval in your cross section view um, but basically these are just line strings these aren't um, sizes of pipe now in a few moments when we just when we get to sue um, it will actually show you the pipe sizes in, in the 3d view um, another question about uh, the complex by element how do you reverse the direction so basically if you were going to if you wanted it, your profile or your line string to go the other direction, you just place it on the other end and you'll see the arrow pop up on the either end. Um, the next question is what do you do if the line is not going in the right direction? You could always just recreate the complex chain using the complex by element and it um, should go in the right direction. So now we want to get a profile on this line. So we're going to go back to the open the profile model and I'm just going to use the view that's already open. Uh, it looks a little funky, but we'll just go with it. And then uh, we're going to offset this profile. Oh, wrong tool. Um, by negative four feet. Now we have our 3D line string of our um, water line out here. And now that we have our 3D lines, we can view those in the cross section. So you, if you wanted to just view the cross sections, you could use the cross section viewer. And I'll need to reference in my um, design file. And we'll give it a left offset of negative one. So if we scroll through here, we'll see the, and I'm not sure why my waterline is not coming in right, but 
That's what happens when you do webinars. So this is the sanitary line, and then um, you'll see once it crosses the, the water line, it'll pick that up as well. Now in the cross-section viewer, um, it there's the water line. It only it places the cell out here at um, the uh, level and color of the, the actual cell. Um, but if you were to create cross sections, which I'm about to show you, it will place it at the correct level. So let's open a cross section file. Let's create cross sections on baseline 98. Well, that's running, I'm going to come out here and look at the questions. Typically, gravity sewer would not be um, done by depth of cover. How would you, else would you create a profile? So you can create a profile for your um, utility lines using any of the vertical geometry tools. Um, I'm just using the depth of cover because that's typically what's used. If you had a profile line or a chain already associated with a specific profile, you could bring that in from your GPK. So you can use any of these tools. You don't have to use this uh, offset transition. Are the existing utility line profile ele elevations coming from the top of the line or the bottom? So the profile uh, is coming from the existing terrain and then that's being copied down negative three feet or four feet, however far you, you put the depth of cover. Is there a particular reason why we're not showing the size of utility lines on the plan view anymore? So um, you, you could still label the utility lines, but you um, you would just have to do that in your plan development. It won't show up in, in the plan itself. You would just have to label those if you want the um, size of the, uh, the utility lines in your plans. And I think that is required. I think you have to label them in the plan view. When you go to create your cross sections, and you'll see this, the cell is actually placed from the cell origin, which is at the top of cell. So that's where the cell origin will look in, or be placed in your cross sections. So let's just create some cross sections so we can see what those will look like. So I'm going to load a preference here. So my cross sections are created and you can see out here that I have my sanitary sewer. Let's just start from the beginning. And if you go further down, you'll see the water line and they're, they're both placed on the correct levels. Okay, so um, now that you have them in your cross-section view and you want to label the utilities, there's two different ways that you can do so. So you can do it with ancillary features and just do the text label, or you can do it with the civil annotation um, tool. So let's try the civil annotation tool first. And um, I don't have a preference set up for the utility text. Yeah, so we're just going to create one, but um, you want to make sure um, that include points, include segments is turned off, and include features is turned on. And we want to label the feature name. And um, we need to set all of these uh, attributes up. So we want the position to be a zero, which is where it is in terms of the um, point. We don't want a prefix. And then if you click on this little box, it'll bring up all the text symbology settings. So we're going to set this text style to FDOT small. And I'm going to set the level. Make sure it's by level. And I'm going to set this to center top. And I'm going to place it a little bit below the cell. Click OK and then go to the annotate tab and select your lines. 
that you um, named them, and I'm not sure why it named it 62 unless that was a mistake on my part, but if you hit apply, then it's going to label it whatever the feature name is. The problem with the annotate cross-section labeler is that it labels it feature name dot feature name. So if you don't want that, you would go and edit find and replace text and just label it 18 inch water main. So that's, a, that's one issue with the civil annotate cross-section tool. If you wanted to name it the feature style, which is the long name that is given in the um, feature definition list, you could do that as well. So I was just going to run through this and show you what, what name I'm talking about. So let's go set this up again. and then click apply and then you'll get this long um, basically the description of the feature and that's what's in this um, in this dialog, oh, well, let me open it in cross section model but so that's two different um, labels you could do using the annotate cross section tool if you don't like either of those you could use the um, ancillary features. And to use ancillary features, let, uh, first you have to select your job and make sure I got the correct project loaded. Change this to profile, select your chain, set your scale, and then under the intersecting elements you want to set this to, um, if you had like a profile chain you could use chain, um, I'm going to use level symbology, and then I'm going to use, I'm going to choose the symbology from my utility file. I'm going to click on this little dialog and select the level name. Sanitary Sewer C. So that's what it's looking for. Oh, and there's another question out here. Can you use ancillary features to create the ovals as well? Yes, you can still use ancillary features if you wanted to use that to create the ovals. Uh, there's a question about cross sections. How can we get the cross sections to be drawn in the RDXSRD view, not in the temp view? You cannot. It's always going to create a model. Um, you don't really even need the RDXSRD view. Um, the only way that you could get it in that view is if you were to copy the cross sections that were created from that model, uh, from the temp model to the RDXSRD view. So let's try this one more time. Okay, then for the elevation, I'm going to extract the elevation from the existing ground line. So I'm going to choose the level name. And then I'm going to give it a vertical offset of just below the depth of cover. Then for the display settings, I'm going to change this to text. And then type in the text that I want to display. Give it the level. And 
then add it to the list. And then once you have it set up, you just click draw and you hit apply and then it runs out and places the label for the, the utility line that you selected. So you could do it using ancillary features. You can do multiple utility lines. So if I wanted to add one for the water and run those at the same time, it would label both of them at the same time. And the pros and cons is, I mean, all ancillary features gives you exactly the label you want. The annotate cross-section label gives you a couple different options and um, it will continue to be what's being used. Draw ancillary features um, will most likely be going away at some point, but it's still available now. So if you want to use that, it's just up to you whichever lab labeling tool you want to use. The other method for creating utilities in SS4 is Sue. Um, a big question I get all the time is what is SU or SUDA? And this diagram kind of explains the different parts and pieces. So SUDA, which stands for Subsurface Utility Design and Analysis, is um, an acronym used by Bentley to encompass their subsurface and drainage software. Su subsurface Utility Engineering, or SU, includes the conflict management um, and attribution tools as well as the 3D modeling of your utility lines. The drainage portion of the SUDA umbrella is called StormCAD, and that includes the 3D modeling of drainage objects as well as hydraulic analysis and calculations. And this chart shows um, how the SU licensing works. So if you own um, a license to any of the Open Roads products, such as Geopack or Power Geopack, for the drainage portion you'll get StormCAD. Um, which includes, includes stormwater design and analysis of up to 100 inlets per drainage model. You'll also get the stormwater attributes. Um, for the utilities portion, you will be able to model your utilities in 3D, but you won't get any of the utility attributes um, or the utility conflict tools. If you own a license to any of the open road products plus one of the SUDA products, which include StormCAD Unlimited, Sewer CAD, Civil Storm, and Sewer Gems, you'll get all of the um, standard functionality plus the additional functionality of the um, product that you own the license to. You still will not have um, Sue attributes or utility conflict tools. If you own a license to the Open Roads products plus Sue, then you will get um, your drainage functionality plus the um, Sue attributes and utility conflict tools. Um, to activate the different products, you, ha you will go to Tools, Product Add-ins, and then select the different products you would like to activate. activate. So um, if you do choose to activate a product, you will get an alert that lets you know that the license um, usage was logged and that it could result in incremental cost. You will get portions of the SUE or SUDA um, software with your standard GEOPAC license, but if you want additional usage of the software, you need to be aware that um, you will get charged an additional fee. Now, as shown in the chart, um, a portion of SUE is delivered with your GEOPAC or Open Roads license, uh, which is the modeling of the utilities. Um, if you try to use some of the other tools, such as clash detection or flex tables or the enhanced attribution, Without activating the product, you are going to get a message that says this, this tool requires a, a license activation and you'll have to go to the product add-ins menu and activate it. If you're a CAD manager and you don't want your CAD users to be able to activate these products, you can exchange this um, delivered um, customized DGN lab called Civil Commands. It's delivered with our workspace and exchange it with the one that's in the Bentley shared folder and then add these config variables listed um, on the screen um, to the custom vars.txt file and then they'll no longer have the ability to access that um, product add-ins menu. Jimmy went over this in his webinar and did um, explain how all of that works. If you want to go check that out. So there are two ways to get to your SU tools. One is from the main menu at the top of MicroStation, and the other is from the test navigation dialog. So let's get back into MicroStation. I'm going to demonstrate the um, different ways you can incorporate your utilities using SU. So I have um, a utility file that I got from my surveyor, and um, I have the terrain set as active. And have my 2D and 3D model up. So let's go to our task navigation and subsurface utilities. 
is where you're going to find all of the SU or SUDA um, tools. Okay, so there's um, a couple different ways to incorporate your utilities using SU. One um, is the Extract from Graphics tool, and that's this little down arrow under the Component tab. And once you click on a tool to create your utilities using SU, you're going to get this action dialog that says, this action will create a utility model in the design file. This is not undoable. So it's not going to create another model like you think of models in your file, not these type of models. It's just the utility model that holds all of the um, SU or utility information um, in the file. So click Yes. And it runs through and creates um, a, a SU project or, SU or utility model for the file. So once that's done, you have to re-click on it because it doesn't stay with the tool. So um, again, you still have to make sure that in your standard configuration you have this include utility features toggled on. And that way you can see the different um, features for SUE. So there's two different methods. One is selection and one is utility filter. So um, if you wanted to use a utility filter, you could set up your own filters to say um, everything that's on a specific feature, or specific level or color, I want to um, convert this to this. We didn't set up any, so I'm just going to use the selection method. Down here, I'm going to set my feature. And uh, under utilities, you have existing and proposed, uh, just like you do with the civil features. And then you have all the different categories. So let's start with the sanitary sewer line again. So I'm going to select existing sanitary sewer quality level C. And then it gives it a pre name prefix and um, you can add a one or name it whatever you want. And then under the description portion, you're going to set the pipe size. So this was a 10 inch pipe, so we're going to leave it at 10 inch. And then on my cursor, it says locate elements and then reset to exit. So you can select multiple elements. Um, you can do a selection set. This is just one line, so I'm going to select it and then right click. And then it says select surface or reset to use active terrain model. So you could select a proposed surface or any other surface that you've created. Um, in this case, I'm just going to use the existing terrain. So I'm going to right click and then it's going to ask you for a vertical offset and this is where you can give it like a depth of cover. So if you wanted it to be negative three, you just hit negative three. And then um, these can be set up to use a trench as well. So if you wanted to create a trench with your um, utility line just to see how much impact it's actually going to take, you could create a trench. I'm just going to leave it at no and data point. And then it's going to run out here. And if I zoom in, you can see that it placed a pipe um, out here for my sanitary sewer line in my 3D model. It also, even though this was already set to um, use the, it was already set on the right level, it, it also sets the level of the plane view. So if this was a default li um, a line on a default level and I needed it to be sanitary, it would set that as well. If you decided that I really didn't want it to be 10 inch, it's really supposed to be a different um, size, you could come out here, go to the properties for the pipe and change the size here and it will update automatically in your 3D view. So if you wanted to do uh, extract from graphics and you had like a 3D line or you had profile information, um, if you're in a 3D file and you have 3D information, this use 3D element elevations will turn on and you could toggle that and you won't have to use a depth of cover. There's a question out here, where did the manhole come from? So this is a part of the SU package. It automatically places this like standard manhole out here. We have some that you could change this to if you wanted to change the feature. See it says no feature definition. You could change it to one that we have set up. So you could change it to whatever or you could change it to a different type of um, node, but th these are standard um, that are that come with the SU package, and unfortunately, there's no way to um, turn that off at the moment. So let's do the water line as well, so you can just kind of see this method again. So 
We'll do selection and we'll locate multiple elements on this time. And we want to change this real quick to water. 18 inch. And I'll do negative four. And it placed the water line out here. Now the water line, it doesn't place manholes, it places end caps, which I wish it would just do that on all of those, but that's a Bentley issue. Another thing is, say you already had started doing your um, utilities in SS3 and you were doing them with civil features, uh, but now you decided you want to use Sue, you would do the same thing. So like it doesn't matter if it was just a line out here or if it's a line that has a feature on it like this one does. You can still do extract from graphics. Um, the only thing you would want to make sure of is if you have, like in this case, I already have a 3D line string out here. You want to make sure that the, the 3D line strings are removed or deleted because when you go to cut cross sections, you're going to have an oval for your pipes as well as whatever 3D line strings and you don't want duplicate um, work. So you want to make sure your 3D line strings get deleted and then you can come out here and extract graphics and choose buried electric. and then set the description and do just like you would with these pipes. Uh, whenever you create the 3D, it also, just like you when you, you design it, it creates and attaches the 3D model. I just have it turned off. You can see it creates and attaches the 3D model and then you can see that in your plan view and make changes on the pipe size and, and feature it from that as well. Um, another method to incorporate your utilities using Sue is to place nodes and conduits. You cannot place a conduit if there's not a node to place it in between. So you have to place your nodes first. And a node is like a manhole or the sanitary sewer clean out or a valve, like a cell almost. So you have to place your node first. So you want to come out here and select a node. And let's just say we're going to do a proposed line. Um, so I have my feature set up and then I want to, it says select reference element for elevation. So you could select if you had a pond um, line that had a specific elevation or if you had a curb line, anything that had an elevation. Um, in this case, I'm just going to use the existing terrain, so I'm going to select the terrain boundary. Or you can type in an elevation, so if you have a specific elevation that you want it at, you could right click and then type in the um, elevation you want. Placement type, so you could do it by minimum depth. If you wanted to insert a, no a node inside a conduit that was already placed, you could do that. Um, I'm just going to choose minimum depth, and I don't want to give it an offset. And uh, it asked me for the rotation, and then I place the cell. And then you can see out here in my 3D view that the cell has been placed. So if I wanted to draw a line, another one, so I could draw a conduit between them. I place another one out here, and then it's placed in my 3D view. Um, and now I can place a conduit between those nodes. So if I go to this conduit tool and come out here, and place a proposed sanitary line, and I want to give it um, 12 inches. And then once you go to place it, you hover over it, it gives you like this orange X, and you can select it and then go to the next and select it and then it places a 
conduit in between those two nodes. And then again, you can change the size, just about everything you can do, just like you would with Extract Graphics. You can get a profile of your utilities. So if you hover over it and go to the context menu, you can get open profile model and select a view. And then that will give you a profile of your utility line. Also in Project Explorer, let me make this a little bit smaller. There's a utility model that lists all of the nodes and links in your utility model. And you can right click on those and open the profile view. You can go to the properties. You can fit it to the view. Um, also, you can do a profile run. So if you wanted to create a profile run, um, it's going to ask you to select the link to add to the profile and then reset. And then once you create the profile run, you can open up the profile um, in the chart view. And then this can be printed. Um, it can be copied to, out, out to be placed in the plan view. Um, there's a bunch of different things you could do with that. Um, you can save this project. If you go to Edit Review Project Properties, you can give it a title and save it out to your project location. Um, add notes for everything in your project. And then with cross sections and labeling, um, so let's go open a cross section file. You would just do the same thing like you do um, with the civil features. You create cross sections and then it will um, sh show up in your cross section view. So let's go here. So everything I've done up until this point, including the cross sections, um, is all covered under your Open Roads license, your GEOPAC license. Um, all the modeling, you, all that's included. Um, so everything, there's no additional charge for everything I've done up until this um, point, and even the cross sections are included as well. So if we zoom in, we'll see our waterline. Um, and then Suda's place is actually like a little pipe, like there's the inside and the outside of the pipe. And if you scroll through, you go through the other line, there's the sanitary sewer. With Sue, there's no way to label these using the annotate the civil annotate um, cross-section labeler. So you would have to use ancillary features to label them. And you would do it just the same way as I showed doing it with civil features. Now let's go take a look at uh, some of the things you get if you were to get the SUE license. So if I was to go to um, activate SUE and go back to the subsurface utilities. Then um, one of the things that you get is the utility attribution and that is under this uh, little guy with a hand. Once you open this up, you can do um, all kinds of things with this information. So you can set the quality level and you can set the investigation level and you could change the inverts and you can cha add the owner And you can add the operational status. Let's say it's going to be removed. Um, so there's lots of information that you can change with the utility attributes. And um, this can be shown in different tables that are created. So uh, let's go into a different file that's already been set up. So I already have some utilities out here in my 3D view and some of them have different attributes associated with them. So if you had all these attributes associated with a specific utility, you could go to the um, 
reports and analysis tab and open up what's called flex tables. So um, some of the tables, like the tables that are predefined, are delivered with the SU product. So if you were to just go to um, gas lines and right click and click open, you're going to get this table that's already predefined with everything set up. But you can edit this table. So if I really didn't want to see all that information that's in that table, I can remove what's being shown and then just add the information that I want. So if I wanted to just see the diameter and the conduit type, um, actually not that, the quality level, and just click OK, then if I opened it again, it will just show me that information. Um, and then you could save out a, a table to um, your project. So like I have this one of water lines uh, that I created. So if I open it up, I'm showing the label, the diameter of the pipe, the link, what the status of the um, operational status, the quality level, quality level, and the owner. And then this um, table can be exported to a CSV file, shape file, text file. You can get a report and you can print this. Um, you can change the margins. You could do a report in XML and print that way. Um, so this is this is could be powerful if you're doing like con conflict or if you want to label or a table of all your utilities. This could be pretty powerful. The other tools you get are the clash detection, which is this tool right here. So if I open up the utility conflict detection, um, it's going to list, and it has to be set in the 3D view, like your, your focus has to be in the 3D view. It's going to list all of the feature definitions um, that I have in this model. So let's say I wanted to check my existing water line against my gas. And let's say I wanted to do it against all the gas, not just the gas line, but the gas nodes as well. I could just drag that folder right in there. And then I want to highlight both of these and give it a soft clearance of what, two feet. Okay, and then you just click process and it runs out and determines if there's any det clash detections and if there is, it places this little ball where the um, clash is happening. You can get properties on, you can set properties on the ball as well. Like you can give it a recommended resolution, um, what the current status is, you can change all of that. And then once you have the clash detection, um, done. Once, if you go back to your flex tables, you can open up a table of all of your um, conflicts, and then you can edit this table as well. Save it out to XML. Save it to a CSV file. You can change the resolution in here to say if it requires a test hole or not. All kinds of different things. So there's a lot of power in the Sue product if if that's the way you want to go. And I don't think I have enough time to do a drainage preview. Let me make sure I have all my questions answered. The nodes and pipe will you just place, will they show in the correct symbology for the plans for submittal? Um, yes, they, so the plan view, the features um, for Sue are set up to do the plan view, 3D view, cross-sectional view, um, so everything will show up like it's supposed to. Can you use clash detection with drainage? would you have needed to do geopack drainage. So yes, you can do clash detection with the pseudo drainage product. If you have geopack drainage or if you have a geopack drainage file, you can bring that GDF file and convert it to a 3D model. Um, so if you have done it in geopack drainage and you want to do clash detection and you want to get that extra license fee, you can um, bring it from the geopack drainage to a 3D model and do clash detection on your drainage. When will the webinar be on the FDOT site? It'll be posted sometime this week. I think that's all the questions. I don't, if I've missed any, um, we'll make sure we get them all answered. And if you have any um, other questions, just give me a call or shoot me an email or you can send the support an email. And um, thank you for attending the webinar today. Have a good day.